I don't know, I don't know if you guys will do a cheesy boy band thing like we are. <laughs> we, we, we've trash. tried to do this before, we and we always <laughs> time it so terribly. We'll give it a go for you if you want. Right, so we, we have the hanging bandits, yeah. yeah. Right, one. And as we say, we should say, and together we are the hanging bandits. Holy okay. shit! Okay. One, two, and, and together, together we are the hanging bandits. bandits. Woo! That's perfect. <laughs> completely, completely out of sync. <laughs> and not together, we are out of time. <laughs> hey, I've done worse on stage. So. <laughs> yeah, fair play, fair play. We've all had those, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, well, that's a first. Yeah. So, so I guess yeah. for you guys, the direction I kind of want to take the interview in to start with is kind of about your songwriting, because I just found when I first found you guys' song last year, I think it was the Suburban Ghost was the first song I, I yeah, reviewed. I think that's the first one so I just found it interesting kind of how you guys write your songs. Your lyrics are very poetic. I was kind of curious, do you guys study that kind of thing? Or is that is that something that is inspired by any particular like literature or anything? Uh, well, I, I definitely, uh, so I, read like a lot of poetry but um i've always valued lyrics and songs um and so i really wanted to spend a lot of time and and i had a kind of fairly specific vision for what i wanted to do with the lyrics um and that was to bring more things from sort of the uh literary canon into um uh in, in into lyric lyric writing which some people have done before to varying degrees of success and it's for you guys to decide how successful my own endeavors were in that direction but that that was sort of the uh guiding concept and as far as specific influences go i mean there's 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 some there's some writers like uh uh helen moore who's a, a british poet that, that i really enjoy but I, I don't think there is any one real specific from the more literary side of things it was more about uh looking at how tools that those writers use could be applied to song lyrics and so that was the process interesting is there any kind of particular elements that you prefer to use with your storytelling like metaphor or simile or allegory um it's tricky uh I mean, there's parts of that in 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 all of the stuff um, used in varying ways. I, I think for me, the main thing is uh, being imagery heavy. I want okay. I don't I don't I don't want to uh, explain the song too much. I want to present a series of images to you. Right. Um, like in my own head, I've got a very specific idea of what those images all amount to. Right. Okay. But I feel like if you as the listener you you get those images and they amount to something completely different and that means something to you that's great and i think that's the beauty of uh what's arguably a more ambiguous and more imagery driven approach to songwriting i mean so and when, when i do make statements in in songs that they tend to be framed as bits of dialogue that characters are saying in songs as opposed to being directly me telling you stuff mm -hmm. that's just not so super interesting to me Oh, thank you, man. I'm, I'm glad some of this stuff's coming across. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so that's kind of the uh, uh, yeah, they're, they're sort of the main the main things that I've incorporated. I think uh, I've I've not done too much in the way of like heavy allegorical writing, um, partly just because that's really difficult to do okay. effectively. Um, yeah, it requires a, a great deal of consistency, and sometimes it, it can be easy to uh like overdo or make a bit cheesy but yeah i, I guess that's that's uh yeah interesting so Did basically you... what happens is sorry sorry Taylor, basically what happens is he he basically writes out documents of word mm -hmm. full of lyrics and then every every few months he just sends out an email 
with a new what do you call it? Uh, like a new collection. A collection, yeah, yeah, a new collection. <laughs> it's the most pompous thing. Ever. Yeah, this <laughs> my latest collection, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and then Alex and I basically, you know, we just you know play around uh, strum chords or whatever, and then whatever something uh, sparks, then you know all we have to do is just go to the collections and then <laughs> fish and then fish for what might work or may not. And for most for most cases, it kind of I don't know about you, Ben, but. It does tend to just kind of, it does tend to work. It's wow. something, you feel it, you feel it. And then just choose one. Uh, of course you have to try it, but right. uh, but usually that's how that's how we usually work. Wow. I mean, I, I don't write lyrics myself. You do write some lyrics. Sometimes, okay. Sometimes, Sometimes it's more like yeah. a weird thing that I, I do for like a week or two weeks and then leave for six months. So I, I've never got into such a consistent habit and I've never studied kind of writing or anything like that. So I don't come right. to the band with a good experience of, of lyric writing. But sometimes I take something which has quite a nice thing that runs through it and I throw it past. It's all got to be signed off by the rest of us anyway. Yeah, right. No right, one's going to let sure, anyone yeah. else go out on stage looking like a douchebag. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just really important. We hold ourselves up to a high standard, we believe, which sometimes <laughs> means things take a lot longer, but it's worth it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, That's it's such an important thing to like filter for other people. You don't want like anyone's bad idea to get through. Like, um, right? You're you're always attached to your own ideas. Yeah, a little to, quality to control is, is necessary. Yeah, 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 for sure, man, for sure. That's fascinating to me too. That how he says that how you kind of have like a word document of all these ideas. Do you? I'm trying to think of the right way to phrase what I'm getting at. How? How is it for you putting that words into a melody? Because I know, like, I talked about it, like, one of the songwriting workshop episodes, it probably was episode two or three, or I talked, I gave my whole overly explained system of, yeah, break it down into the syllable for people. But the thing is, okay. that still is difficult, but, you know, because to me, I always tell people by the songwriting style, I always come up with the melody first and then I just keep doing that melody over and over again until eventually the whole vibe of the song, it puts the words in my head. So to me, it's, just, it's, it's interesting when I hear people that you can take the lyrics and put it to a song. That's really cool. So so what you're saying is you, you develop a melody, a melody part, and then and then on top of that, you you do draw chords on top of that, basically. Exactly. Like I'll have the I'll come up with the melody of the song that I'm going to sing first, and then I'll kind of okay. find something words that fit into that melody, and then I'll kind of pull meaning into it mm -hmm. based on how mm -hmm. the vibe of that melody makes me feel. That's very cool, man. That's very cool. I yeah, I feel like we don't really. Sorry, sorry. we write we we write like songwriters and, and we use chords as, as kind of our, our foundation and our basis to get the kind of i think rhythm plays a big part of it because we're putting it to words right. so if we're using chords we can think about chord changes rather than melodies and the melodies kind of come a little bit later yeah I sometimes think, in other instrumentation right i think that's true i think that's that. true yeah so it sounds like you it's guys are like kind that. of write the song out on paper first like you you actually come up with chord progressions and things like that mm -hmm. yeah. well the way okay. the way it works for me for example is i i just love picking up the guitar right. and and just just strumming whatever hap whatever comes out right. and then usually because i've got a nice document where i know i could possibly just put some lyrics to that gives me a nice um how, how, how could i word it uh that gives me the chance of basically just about every chord progression that i feel could work mm -hmm. I, I i don't have to wait until i write some lyrics because well, because I've got a song, a, a, a lyric writer, so I can right. just go to the. Can, it's, it's great. It's yeah. great. Honestly, it is like great. Um, so I can just go and, and look for some lyrics right. that will fit to the progression, and then as I'm trying to figure out, as I'm trying to fit the lyrics into the chord progression, then naturally, one of the main things that will tell me whether the song works or not is whether the lyrics will come through with a nice melody or with a melody that may be a bit too intense right or you know if the words tend to kind of fit which usually they do for some mysterious 
and glorious recent. Well, that's when you start to compromise what you originally wrote a little bit. You know what I mean? like, yeah. You break. Try to fit. Down, yeah, yeah, yeah. Different right. Kind of time signature, maybe, or think about throwing another chord in as like a passing yeah. chord to get to another section. Okay. Uh, but you would. It's like. Um, it's just. It's just interesting. It's nice because. Um, I think being a vocalist can be very, you know, you feel very naked when you're singing your words out to people. And I definitely think mm. when we got this going, having Andy that had, had gone through like quite a, a couple of years of education to study lyricism and, and philosophy and stuff, I felt very confident that I could take his words. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's, it's I'm, nice a, to be able to I'm share, a second that. Share people's skills. I'm a second that. Wow. We're a bit like, we, we follow in the footsteps of, uh, of the Manic Street Preachers. Yes, they've got a similar right. Because because that's uh, the, it's the bass player that writes the lyrics. It's Nicky Wire who who writes. It's most of the lyrics, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, back in the day, it, was it used like to be team. Richie. Yeah, Richie yeah. and uh, Richie Simbora. No, not Richie Simbora. <laughs> uh, and and uh, Nicky used to write most of the lyrics, and then James Dean Bradfield would uh, sort of compose around that. Um, so we've kind of taken a similar style there, mm, and sure. it, it, it like what Alex is saying works both ways as well because uh, he, I think he doesn't feel as naked uh, because he's not forced to present like his own inner thoughts about the world when he's singing, and singing is a very uh, direct and close relationship. And vulnerable, it can be a vulnerable, vulnerable relationship right. with the audience, and for me, I get to write the words, and I don't have to be the person also. Uh, projecting them, which is right. good for everyone because I'm a terrible singer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a win-win situation, really. <laughs> that is interesting because that's an interesting point too. How okay, as a singer, like there definitely has to be some synergy going on there too. We'll be able to take uh, those words, they be able to sing it expressively. Because when I listen mm. to you guys' music, I would never get that. Like I would think that. You know, you had some input into it uh, as you're singing it, so that's kind of cool that you guys are able to be on the same page like that. No, I think it really, it really helps. It really helps to have somebody else deal with lyrics. I mean, see, I've, I've, I used to write lyrics. Um, I used to. Uh, so English is not my first language, and I used to kind of hide behind the English mm -hmm. because I feel like if I wrote in, in Spanish, it would be very obvious what I'm writing. And I just kind of had the, the self doubt in my head that you know it's just it's just gonna crap. Right. So <laughs> so I I'd hide in the English language and then I would go for like very surreal kind of psychedelic like imagery. Right. Which this just kind of like didn't really add up to much, you know. So then I, I I started listening to what this guy's writing, and I'm like, all right, let's let's stop writing now. I'll I'll, I'll yeah. play the guitar yeah. then. <laughs> sandy has got some lovely little bits so. though. How does that work then? Because. Because I just thought of that. If English is it your first language, but you're singing oh. in English, does it kind of make you have to think in a different way at all, or that, that kind of make open up some other ideas and creativity? Oh, it definitely does. It definitely does. It's definitely the. It's very interesting when you can express something like the same thing in another language, and by the choice of the words, you kind of realize that it's it has a subtle difference in meaning. But but that's uh, to be honest, you, you get used to that pretty quickly. I mean, in all fairness, I. Pretty much grew up listening to English English music. Okay. Anyway, I, I didn't really have a lot of interest in Spanish music. It's only okay. now that I'm really listening to Spanish music. But so so it just it, it felt pretty natural, really. I mean, other than the, than the accent that I've got, other other than that, it's just uh, it feels good to hide behind behind the words, you know. Because I know, see, the, the thing was like my my friends back in Spain and my family just they wouldn't straight up. Like understand what I was saying, which I was a bit. It's like okay, I can just say whatever, right, and have some fun. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was it was it was fun. It was fun. What what was it lasted? I'm I'm gonna pick it up again. <laughs> I think it allows like uh, they relate to the songs in in different ways, and if I was the person singing it, um, the, the the results would be quite quite different. Um, I, I think of it kind of like uh, it, it's like uh, an act of. Um, or several different actors having having a, a, a go at, at one single role wow. and they're gonna relate to it in different ways and certain things are gonna come out more wow. certain emotions will be more prevalent in, in <laughs> some performances and they may, may be wholly absent in other performances uh, but it just highlights different things in the lyric wow here's one so <clears throat> let me look up the name the song 
postcards from the colonies. Mm-hmm. What does that? First of all, just the the title. Let's start there. What does the title of the song mean to you? Okay, so so postcards from the colonies is kind of um, uh, the title. So the the title is is reflective of this idea of going on holiday, particularly in this case, going to places that the, the British have colonized. Um, and having this this sense of uh, removal, although the song itself isn't about that, but having this sense of removal from the from the colonial past, right? So the song is kind of uh, ironically titled "Postcards from the Colonies." Yeah, I thought that was an interesting song. That one kind of piqued my interest a lot too, just the the words of it. Because of course, you would imagine me here in the states. You know, a title like that is some of the things you were saying has its own meaning, like like the mention of things like reparations, how mm. in the United States, the American Indians got uh, reparations. Now there is like a political controversy if African-Americans like myself, if we would get reparations for the things that have happened. So kind of some of the I actually let you kind of talk about it and maybe hear from all you guys what, what your thoughts are on that song and just some of the things that you might have had in mind performing it and whatnot. Sure, maybe Alex, I think. Yeah, 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 performing it, um, yeah, I understand it could be controversial. We don't perform it too much. It was kind of a period we were playing it. And we never really, we've never done it as a full band either. When we've done it, we've always done it quite intimately. So I'll just uh, sort of take the song, essentially, and do it with my own acoustic. Um, I I think, um, I hope that makes it kind of feel less um, like we're trying to sort of pump a message in with a big loud mm-hmm. band and, and more this is a poignant song that you can you should be listening to in, in, in a way of learning rather than listening to it in a way to sort of call out possible language things in and make we want to make people aware that we are aware of the past right yeah yeah I mean a big part of what um, that song explores is is this idea that uh, the working class in Britain mm-hmm. were were um the, the 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 boot which stamped down uh the people in 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 the uh, across the british empire right mm-hmm. and the british working class themselves were an exploited class um and yet they were frequently being used as a battering ram against even more exploited people and so the songs about the, the, the like frankly the immorality and the awkwardness of that right because on on a certain level we uh stand on the backs and the benefits of of these colonies mm-hmm. and these places um and on the other hand a lot of the descendants uh who were involved in 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 these uh operations uh to, uh well, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to talk neutrally about it's it because crimes, it's such right? a it's yeah. These right. crimes, yeah. right? But you know, um, you don't. You don't. You're not standing from a neutral. Like, you're not trying to. Pr- no, the song is neutral. neutral, but it's like right. how do you? How it's more do you thought provoking. Yeah. yeah, and 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 so um, yeah, it was about trying to express that uh, the the people who were committing these crimes really themselves didn't even benefit uh, fr- from from any of this. Yeah. That was Interesting. Done. Interesting. And now, it, well, when when it was in rotation for us, we were kind of subtly calling it a, a pretty pr- a protest song. Yeah, you know? it's pretty interesting. Big song. I mean, I remember, I remember when what, I, I don't know how many times we've actually played, but we played on a on a on a pop festival, and um, mm-hmm. I remember we were debating what song to begin the set with, and we had uh, that song, and the other song we were trying to, well, we had was this song called Amanda, which is a song about, well, arguably it's a song about a lady, and you know, it's a nice. It's it's a bit, it's a beautiful song. It's it's, it's a lot more kind of straightforward song mm-hmm. in comparison to yeah. postcards from the in, in comparison to postcards. And I remember right. thinking, why, why do that one? You know, it's a bit it's a bit too intense. Right. And 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 these guys were like, dude, you know, we we want to make we want to make a statement of what right. we are, of what we are. And that's when I realized it's like, oh, oh I, I see what's going on here. If we play postcards from the colonies, the first song. It's gonna be like it's pretty clear like you know yeah, whether you like right. it or not it's, it's like oh okay you know and you, you think, certainly yeah. know about singing mary had a little lamb <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and, and as a protest song it's like um 
you know, there's there's lots of songs which are written which which criticise rightfully these mm -hmm. historic uh, ills, um, but there's very few which also acknowledge like your own kind of uh, place in them, right? Although we're, right. we're removed from history and generations and such, we're still descended from these people. So I thought it was interesting to do a song. Uh, which uh, which which tried to handle that right, which right. is what what the final refrain is about, you know. Right. And um, I think I forget the lyrics off the top of my head, but it's about the shame of this uh, sort of implicit relationship with these crimes. Right. So I think that's yeah. interesting too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a pin in that thought of protest. So I'm gonna come back to that after I ask this. Um, I was gonna ask because I was trying to get educated too about how other places are from people that actually are from there. Now in the UK, the idea of that colonization, kind of what is the attitude about it? Kind of like, how is it taught in schools? How is it thought of publicly? It's a good question. Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it's, it's, I, I would say it's very varied and there's quite a large generational divide, right? I think most people our age, uh, I'm 31, who, um, the oldest in the band? No, I'm the oldest by four months. <laughs> but yeah, so basically, people around our age and younger, I think, almost universally, have a dim view of of this period in in British mm -hmm. history. Um, I think older people um, have a much more glorified. I think their education was uh, sort of not done in the same way as we we've had it. Uh, one thing we have is because of the internet and different technology. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have we have access to a bigger picture that I don't think they did. Okay. Uh, and it always feels like mm -hmm. it's always new media v old v's old media all the time. Um, that's quite a prominent thing I think. And that that pro I don't know the education system well enough, but if that's a re any reflection of it, then yeah, there's definitely a problem in how different generations view okay. things massively. Um, but yeah. That's interesting because I was kind of thinking of the contrast for that because as everybody around the world knows, the United States has done plenty of <laughs> plenty of meddling in, uh, uh, it's so of itself, you know, but on. kind of the attitude that makes it kind of interesting is even from some of the older generation because of how much of a melting pot America is that there's a lot of people who've immigrated and have parents that have immigrated from other places attitude is a lot more mixed like even though i know it was the spanish sorry sandy <laughs> but with like columbus day nowadays like a, a holiday mm -hmm. that cool. has a different attitude yeah. and like yeah for sure at this point is 2020 i think it happened so it's two years ago at this point they actually stopped acknowledging columbus day that year because of the george floyd situation mm. which was an international so i'm sure you heard about that oh, yeah and absolutely. they started celebrating juneteenth which is uh well, yeah. look it up so okay. i can't i can't explain it as good as internet can so yeah. i'm not even gonna try but basically I'll, I'll say it's a black holiday that has african okay. super ties we'll say that okay. but the point um, is, is it's interesting to me just to, to hear that it's because it's something that i guess i never thought about i never thought of how you know a band that's from the uk and how people over there think about those kind of things so it just was really interesting to me too to hear that perspective of it i thought it was really fascinating both both of our countries really i mean uh i mean spain is it's, it's 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 pretty much on the same 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 situation as england really i mean just maybe a, few, a couple of a couple of century a, a century before or something like that 15 or 14 we were pretty um 1400 1500s right mm -hmm. yeah but it's pretty much the same i mean yeah, 1492 it, columbus sailed 1492 yeah that's that's the one <laughs> yeah yeah I guess that's that's what started all these crazy monarchs yeah. just wanting to extend extend their and expand always right. always hungry for more right god damn it it's really really yeah. interesting you know because because there's actually it just made me think of just the mentions and see what you guys think of it there's like a rap song from lupe fiasco famous rapper all black everything there was some criticism because of the fact that you always really talked about black culture and things but it is still a thought-provoking idea that that song did of lyrics about what the world would be like without the european influence that spread anywhere mm -hmm. and if these cultures had a chance to develop on their own on their own yeah so it's kind yeah, of an interesting that's, idea like it's what do you guys thought, think of like that it's, like a, yeah. uh, it's fascinating man i mean 
this is one of the great uh like shames of 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 this of the of the, the european expansion is that it, it uh annihilated so many communities man. yeah i mean right. so they, many they, fundamentally every culture it touched it it it, it wiped right. out it or poisoned. or amalgamated into its own uh, right. at, at the at the tip of a gun right so yeah i mean it, it it's an interesting thought experiment but it's also like tragic to think about uh, the cultural achievements that, right. that could could have been and and now aren't because, right. because it's probably really extension. just like maybe asia and some of the middle east was more recently kind of introduced to that mm-hmm. like japan probably i i believe japan for what i've heard it was more like world war ii was when that influence came in so like, yeah, those are really the only yeah. cultures that you can kind of look at to see like an example of a culture that kind of developed farther into the modern era without outside influence of governance. Well, and then even, you know, even in a, a lot of those areas, um, there's, there's going to be like indirect influences, like, Absolutely. you know, f- basically the, the American empire, the European empires mm-hmm. have, uh, sort of, um, sapped away, uh, economically and communally, even at those countries, oftentimes, so they were still operating in in, in kind of a, a situation of cultural scarcity. But if it wasn't for that interference, uh, you know, who knows how how much more vibrant or or expansive those cultures would have been? Yes, yeah, it's very interesting to think about. So they kind of that's why I would say put a pin in what we were saying the protest music. So I want to kind of come back to that. I wanted to ask you guys kind of what your thought is about that. Cause like this conversation we were just having there is why I think art and music is so interesting and why I still stand on it. I will without a doubt say to me, art period, music, writing, literature, pictures, all of that. It's a better time capsule of our society than any mm. textbook could ever be. Because it's, talk, it's people talking about what they really feel and what they're going through. So I feel like just nowadays, what we notice as we were talking about the protest music, things aren't really as thought provoking anymore. I notice. I notice a lot of times the things they're more standing on a soapbox rather than actually being thought provoking and posing the question to think about. Well, so I just want to get you guys' opinion of that. It's a lot of provoking, perhaps not thought provoking, but okay. it's provoking. <laughs> That's very true. Which is kind of sad because it all goes down to how sexual something can be, and then that, I, I go, it's is it provoking. Is it a meme or not? Is yeah, it a meme? or is it a meme, and then that's it. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. Because you definitely see that too, as you just said. And like, I won't go too deep into that, but that definitely is something too, like how we kind of, we do, I feel like there's just a lot of things that we will look back at it one day and say, wow. We really could have did a better job. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like, I definitely try and say that though in our music as well. I think, I think literally subconsciously we all basically write that like we're in the kind of we're past the golden age of capitalism now. You know, we're mm-hmm. really seeing this thing die out. Yeah. And and yeah. to be honest, at this point, it's kind of like maybe we hope to be around to see it, to see what that new life will be like when right. the system has to eventually collapse. Right. Um, and we kind of write almost like we're peering in we're on that time in period. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah, I think like trying to capture the moment is a great way of um, uh, creating a thought provoking thing because I like, I like what you said, like um, there's, you know, a lot of protest songs that kind of just stand on, on the soapbox. And again, that's not super interesting to me. Um, uh, so a great way of getting at these issues is is just by talking about the things that are uh, that, that you're seeing in your immediate environment, and the f- and, and even better if you can do it in a way which, uh, or at least is this my opinion. Other people disagree, but even better if you can do it in a way which is like uh, visually engaging. By by which I mean the lyric creates some sort of image. Mm-hmm. Besides for for posing sort of. Um, uh, a philosophical question uh, or, or something, and finding ways of doing that, which, yeah, like that, that's the main thing the lyrics are is trying to find ways of reflecting society uh, with, without without just downloading my opinions onto you because you know, that's not, not interesting, right? Right. Well, it's very interesting because I feel like you see that with media a lot nowadays you know without i don't want to be specific just because that it takes away from my point but 
a lot of times like the whole and I'm, I'm talking down on it so i don't want to you know be overly controversial i i in my opinion that might get some people in my own personal community upset but i think that all of this is great what's going on but the quote unquote woke movement is something that i feel like is sometimes guilty of that it will do shouting the point from the rooftop without ever actually giving you that thought provoking concept to think about. Yeah, there's something strangely, um, I have to like, I have to pick my words carefully, but like, um, there's like a very strong orthodoxy in that movement. Right. And, Interesting. um, people who are, um, who are maybe more ignorant of certain issues and who maybe uh, misspeak or, or say say things out of ill education can uh, can get really significantly bad reactions. And in general, there's maybe not a great amount of space for dialogue in, in that kind of community, which is, uh, it, you know, not great. I, you know, I, I think ultimately being able to talk to people that you disagree with is uh, a great like firewall between violence ultimately. Oh, absolutely. so yeah i think i think that's important and ha- having those dialogues i think is more important than deplatforming right. people and stuff but you know that's that's me it's interesting because something that i find too that you just said is interesting is talking to people you disagree with rather than kind of approaching it violently i think a lot of that in general too I feel like a lot of times we don't do a good enough job putting ourselves in those situations because a lot of times people purposely will shelter themselves from people that have different opinions than them. And just in my opinion, I don't think that that's very healthy. I think it's always a good thing when you are around people that have a different perspective because that's something that you can learn from. Yeah, we build our own echo chambers now, don't don't we, with social media and stuff. Right. we see our own views bounce back at us constantly and that's very comforting but right. it's not a great way of kind of uh, growing intellectually or right. or individually that's something where i think the idea of how music is the universal language how is something that i think that this community does get right is the fact that with music it can bring people together from across the world like you and i from across other because music historically has broken boundaries many many times and i think that that's something that's it was good about it is the fact that you know it can break boundaries and i think those are boundaries that need to be broken a lot of the time yeah absolutely well it's a great place of like sharing ideas and, and cultures and um, you know there's wonderful dialogues and right. musical dialogues that is c- can be created between people of vastly different backgrounds right. and that's, that's kind of wonderful and that's like the birthplace for so many genres that we all love absolutely is you know diff- people of different cultures uh uh, uh in in a melting melting pot trying different ideas out and uh and some of it bangs really hard all right <laughs> absolutely so we're gonna change gears did i do that right because I'm because you're on this side of the car wherever you are, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna change yeah, gears. Yeah, yeah. Get sticks on the left. <laughs> <laughs> we don't drive automatics. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're 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 not lazy like we are with the automatic. <laughs> no, notice how the first company to really do that was Tesla, an American company, to make a self-driving mm. car. <laughs> right. We yeah, we just we. We probably are the country that drives the most that we don't even want to drive no more. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because the combination of automatic plus extremely long and never ending, uh, like, right, yes. it's just like, <laughs> it's just perfect, isn't it? I just have the image of like an American driver, just absolute stereotype, but an American driver basically doing like four things. <laughs> And like none of them <laughs> is driving. Right. Driving. Right. Like, he's driving. <laughs> because yeah. all he has to do is just, just, he just straight, yeah. straight, 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 straight. It's like, it's, enough, you know, all right. it's sad because it's true. Because like, mm-hmm. like the fact that it's a selling point. How many cup holders has a car for real? That's not even. <laughs> that's not even a joke. It's for real. If, if a car has more cup holders and bigger cup holders, it's a good thing. Oh. <laughs> do, you find it, do you find it kind of mad how people fall for these things? Like, 
constantly <laughs> being sold things or like reiterations where I think their life's more convenient, but it's just becoming more junk on top of junk. Do you Absolutely. think it's kind of mad that we can advertise this? Because it's all kind of, I mean, advertising has evolved, but it all has these base right. principles, which it feels like is we could have elevated ourselves above advertising by now, right. <laughs> but they're almost so good at triggering our primordial right. brain waves that they're selling us all this madness right. still. Yeah, I mean, yeah. as I got older, I've started to feel that way too, you know, just, just to me, it's funny because I always talk about that, how wasteful of a mentality that, that is, that you have to constantly move on to what's new and just throw 100%. out what you already have is, is wasteful. It's your self-worth is kind of measured by the money that you're making and the things that you have and the supermodels you've been with and, and things like that, rather than how much that you've grown as a person and, and your character that you've grown into, you know? Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing is like this, this has been like put on the spotlight for now quite a few years. Absolutely. And it still is the way it goes. Yeah, it's right. nothing and new. And it still is, yeah, this, it's not, nothing, nothing is changing. Right. Like we are all, we're all complaining about how, how lame it all is. Right. And yet there's still clearly a, a gigantic majority of a mass of people yeah, that still right, just right. prefer it. Yeah. Right. They just, they just <laughs> blindly yeah. just prefer it because it works. Right. Um, it's, it's just mental, man. It's just yeah, mental. It really is. It really is. So you just you just start to realize that the older you get, the more that you learn, you know? <laughs> <laughs>